Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. You I'm know, sorry. I, uh, I forgot about our first appointment. I'm 0 for 1, man. You That's know what? not good. It's okay, because I don't know if you remember this, but it was Vince Carter's last game at the Garden, and JJ, me, our, a couple of our other buddies, we came to the game separately, and JJ had hit you up, and he was like, and you said to us, meet me here, and you brought us onto the court. We got to get onto the court. So I feel like we're even now. Okay. All gotcha. right, so it's okay. All right, so you were at the game on the court. Did you guys actually, some of the guys at some point, and I think uh, Tony may have come on to the into the studio. No, we wanted mm-hmm. to that day, but we couldn't. You guys were um, doing the show in the garden, basically. You guys oh. were doing it in the garden that day. On the pregame show. Yeah. The postgame show we do across oh, the street. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. I think some of you guys in the past have come to watch. You have invited yeah. us, but in we've a- never been able to. He might have been there. I came in a different day. Right. Yeah. He came okay. a different day. For a Rangers right. game. Um, right. Okay. Gotcha. There we go. Gotcha. Yeah. We got to make a trip there. I want to see the well, studio. Oh, you got my oh, number. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Definitely. Hopefully um, the COVID restrictions will be re- uh, relaxed and you guys can come yeah, visit. For yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, I've all, this show is just, you know, we kind of get to know the person that is who you are now before. So I I was looking back at, you know, your, you know, your Wikipedia bio, honestly, and uh, I saw that you um, grew up in California. You're California. Originally Manhattan. Originally Manhattan. So in the West and when I was seven. Okay. Uh, and what's so special about what I'm doing now is when I was a little boy in Manhattan, the Knicks were the thing. Yeah. And Clyde Frazier was the man. Yeah. To the point that even my mother. See, what you have to understand about the Knicks teams in the early 70s is that it was more than just a basketball team. They had the whole city yeah. in the palm of their hands. Yeah. So that even non-basketball fans loved them. Right. So like my mother, who doesn't know the difference between a dunk and a two-point <laughs> yeah. uh, jump shot, yeah. uh, loved Clyde Frazier. And, and now you get to see him all the time. Right. So that's, that's why this is uh, so special for me, and I'm so fortunate to be able to do what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, Given my background, right. I'm the only one of our family that was not a uh, in the uh, tri-state area. Oh, really? Yeah. Why'd you guys move to California? My dad uh, was a consultant, and a company bought the company that he was working for mm-hmm. and moved us out to the West Coast. Okay, so then you grew up there, and you know, growing up, just a regular kind of life, kind yeah, of kid. You know, it's kind of uh, I would say a privileged existence. Palo Alto is one of the great places in America. Yeah. And we got there in the early 70s before all of the internet Silicon Valley explosion, right. which was amazing how, you know, you're in a community and then all of a sudden it becomes the epicenter of like the whole World. economy. Yeah, honestly. You know, Steve Jobs, Stephen Jobs uh, lived down the block from where I grew up. Wow. Now, obviously, we were there well before he got yeah. there, but that's just an indication of what kind of community it was. Now, it right. wasn't like that necessarily growing up, Yeah. Uh, but that's what it's become. Right. It's crazy. Uh, isn't Jeremy Lin from there, too? Yeah. Right? So Jeremy Lin went to my high school. Cool. And before uh, Lin Sanity hit, I ran into him in the lunchroom at the Knicks practice facility and he said <laughs> hello. And after Lin Sanity hit and I said hello, he didn't say hello back. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, wow. Well, la- so he, him, I but... mean, he hit it in a way that is... That uh, was... Right, remarkable that stretch. I don't, I don't know if I don't know if we'll ever see anything like that for that stretch. It was like a comet. And talk about being a transcendent sports moment. He was on the cover of Time Magazine in back to back issues, which is unprecedented. Right. I, I I mean I thought that whole team. I I really I know I'm a huge Knicks fan. Like I told you, and we won't get into it. But I really thought honestly, Mello at that time was a big reason why. Jeremy Lin never stayed, why they never coexisted. He did, you know, he's so, he's so ball-dominant back then, Melo, and his mindset is not what it is today. I think it kind of, like, just ruined that whole 
thing they had going with Lynn and um, D'Antoni at the time, but neither here nor there. But uh, you go to college, you, you, you majored or minored in psychology. How'd you go from psych? Because I was a psych undergrad and I took a year and a half off and I was blessed and fortunate enough for my brother to be like, hey, I know this dude, Professor Thorne. Like, you're going to like him, and I think you should go check out what he has to offer. And it was SCM, the program. And it completely changed my life, I'm not going to lie. So I'm just curious. I always, I'm always curious, like, what, why and how and what made you go? Okay, so my dad, with our East Coast roots, my dad was a Cornell graduate. And his advice to me, and I had always wanted to pursue an honor career, was you don't need to necessarily study this in the classroom. Get your experience outside of the classroom in college and see where it takes you because what you want is a basic overall education. My bias, and that's because of the track that I've taken, is that you don't need to study these things from a professor. The best experience and the best teaching is to get the practical experience because, as you guys know now, this is a practical business. If you want to be on the air, the people doing the hiring click on your link or play your tape or whatever it may be, and they don't really care that much about what your degree is in. Mm -hmm. It's how do you look and how do you sound. And you don't pick up a lot of the ability that you may develop in the classroom. You pick it up by doing. So at Cornell, and in a way very fortunate, because not a lot of kids at Cornell want to be sportscasters. If you go to Syracuse, the the competition just to get the college experience is brutal. In my case, I got on the student radio station. I was able to help out of the Cornell football and basketball broadcast. I was very fortunate because going into my senior year, the town of Ithaca started a local newscast, mm. and they wanted kids like me to be on the air. So I was the, an original sportscaster. Wow. So too was Carl Ravitch, believe it or oh, not. Oh, wow. On That's Ithaca crazy. News Center 7. Wow. Is it still there? It is. Oh, cool. I think. And then for me, I had a resume tape. I yeah. had the radio experience, but I also had a TV tape when I graduated. So, thankfully, uh, an hour away, CBS affiliate in Binghamton, New York, had an opening. They saw my tape, and they didn't care that I was a psych major. They liked my tape. Hmm. And I was only an hour away, young, cheap, whatever, got the job. Nice. That's how I started. I love that. And I Carl Ravitch, that. actually, after I was hired to do the weekends, I ultimately got promoted uh, to be the lead sportscaster, and Carl came in to be the weekends. Uh, and we actually ended That's up funny. auditioning against each other. <laughs> for a job at Sports Center back in 93, and they hired Carl over me, and that's why I ended up on ESPN2. Uh, uh, with the, um, ESPN2, and you did, um, what were the shows? You did NHL, NFL, and... Um, Sports Smash. Was Sports my, Smash. With Sports Stuart Smash. Scott yeah, and yep. Deb uh, Placey at the time. Yep. Uh, so I was an original hire on ESPN2, but it just goes to show you about the randomness of the pursuit. Yeah. You don't need a degree in it. Mm-hmm. There's no track. If you go to medical school, you're a doctor, you can work anywhere. Same Mm -hmm. with being a lawyer. If I were to say, okay, Mike, here's what you can do to be on the air, I can't give you a specific path. Yeah, right. Like, here's here's the ingredient. I can't say do X and Y and you'll get to Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's show business. Right. It's random. Yeah. Who is going to like you? Who's going to look? Right. That's why it's so difficult. Yeah. So... And then, so at ESPN, at those early stages, what was it like over there? I, it's totally different now. Obviously, it's a, it's a mega company now. but Right. So I got in there in 93, and I can think uh, back to that time when I think the 90s, which was basically my highlight there. I was there till 08, mm-hmm. but I was in prime spots up until about 2001 mm-hmm. in terms of doing Sports Center, a lot of these high-profile show, uh, shows. Mm-hmm. Sports Center back then was it. There was no internet. There was no Twitter. If you were a Tigers fan, you had to watch the 11 o'clock Sports Center baseball the night to find out if they won. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. There wasn't the baseball network. There wasn't the NHL network, the NBA network. There wasn't the red zone. It was different. Chris Berman comes on Sundays at 7 o'clock with the NFL highlights in 1997. The only way to see the highlights is to watch that show. Wow. There's no red zone. Yeah. There's no There's NFL nothing. network. It's amazing how technology has changed the whole business. I know, in 25 years. Right. Basically. So that's uh, the era I was a part of. I, you know, Keith and Dan were on at 11. They were rock stars to the point that they were on the cover of People magazine. Dan I mean, Patrick? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
It's another world. It's another yeah. era. That original core of dudes like Stuart Scotts, the Bermans, the Dan Patricks, like I, I don't watch ESPN anymore, honestly. Well, I, I, I don't. Maybe I think it's, it's because you have so many other choices. Back then, there yeah. were no other choices. I just think it's so gimmicky now at ESPN. It's more like, uh, like uh, I don't know. Those guys were more real. Like, even Stu- uh, Scott Van Pelt is still the same, like, at night, you know, his show at night or whatever. He's just who he is. But I just feel like a lot of those talents are, are putting on a show, you know? Right. So it's like, I'm not into it, but... It's amazing what they've done in 25 years. You drive right. by that campus, it's right. Ridiculous. So the evolution is that back in my era, we gave you the result. Yeah. People didn't know the result. Yeah. Now everybody knows the result. What they give you is their takes on the on result. On the results, yeah. It's changed totally different. Yeah. You have what I call opinionators on there now. Yeah. Telling you what they think about what happened. Correct. When we were on there... We told you what happened. The facts, yeah. Right. These are these are what's going yeah, but on. But in you a fun way, own, yeah. In a creative way, yeah. There wasn't this, you know, the social media aspect has made this such a hot take society. Yeah. Back then, there wasn't a lot of editorializing. It was yeah. more fun, yeah, about what was happening with the personalities and the highlights. Yeah. So it's completely different now. It's crazy. It's crazy, and has that affected you know? I'd say like your job now, the pre, the post, you know, that with the Knicks, the MSG, is it is 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 that has that changed a lot since you started there? Is that relatively still the same or is that a lot different too? See what I like about what I do is it's still basically what I used to do. And right. that is okay, the Knicks lost, here's what happened and why. Right. The Knicks won, here's what happened and why. We're not in a position to sit there and and, and have hot takes on things. Right. Which I think at least in my skill set and experience is more preferable. Yeah. I think, I mean, I, I, I like that too, honestly. But like you said, it's it's tough. It's, you know, everybody's, I get a notification before I even see it on the TV. Right. It's crazy. It's like, right. oh, I guess the Yankees lost, guys. You know right. what I mean? We're still in the top of the eighth Right, or and you can see the highlights as they uh, yeah. evolve, right? You get a Twitter feed yeah. or a highlight or whatever it it's may be. It's just coming in all the time. Right. Um, so we're in a completely different era, and uh, I think these media companies are, are trying to evolve and figure out the best way to do things, but it's definitely a challenging environment now because there's so many more options. I know. I know. I mean, like you, we were talking about earlier, we have a sports podcast. How like you sp- never would have ha- I would not be here 20 years ago. No, no way. Absolutely not. Exa- and that's the technology. Like right. now a regular consumer can get the gear – and right. stuff that, you know, I mean, it's not the same as ESPN's, but right. it does the same basic thing to do what you need to broadcast and, and shoot. Yeah, I mean, I sometimes am in here and I'm like, wow, I can't believe we live in a time where we can do this. You, you know, know, there's also other things going on in terms of our Knicks coverage where there are fans that go up on YouTube and do their own postgame show. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, literally. It's a whole new world. So. I know, it's crazy. And they get a lot of views, honestly, just a lot of just them being like, hey, this is what I think, opinionated. To me, what it does is it fractionalizes all of the media output and makes things very hard to be important. Right. Because when I was there at ESPN in the 90s, we were it. We were important. Yeah. Now, even the mainstream media is kind of diluted by the fact that guys can do whatever show whatever. they want on like, YouTube or whatever it may be. I feel like, I hate to say it, Tony's not a huge fan of them. but And, and you know, neither am I <laughs> with the content they push out, but I do respect what they have done. And Barstools, I feel like, was a big player in changing the outlook on media and these and these mega companies, you know, like ESPN. It's like, it's like all right, you don't need to go to that source. Here's, a, here's like, this other source of information from these companies. Guys. So, you know, I don't even know uh, the specifics about Barstool. Are they like a YouTube channel? Are they a Twitter feed or their <laughs> website? And what? And are they on all day? I mean, yeah. Go, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Tell oh, well, I mean, originally they started out essentially as like a, a, a website, like a sports blog yeah. almost, where you can go on their website, you pick whatever team or area you're in, and you can just start reading off articles about whatever teams are in that area, right? And it was all more of like an aggregate stuff thing. That, well, who, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't write the articles. They probably got it from... No, they, they had, had, they, they they had, had writers, writers. Had writers yeah. like yeah. covering writers. the Knicks and stuff like Dave that. Dave Portnoy, yeah. basically, yeah. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. he started, obviously, and you know they had like a, a small team at mm-hmm. first, and that's when they started this website, right? Um, and then just kind of slowly from there, they, they started creating this 
this company where it wasn't you know an ESPN where you got guys in you know suits and ties and everything yeah. reporting on the on, on sports. It was more about guys on bar stools Regular guys. at the bar and right. t-shirts, saying and shorts, whatever, just right? Saying whatever. Yeah, and it was yeah. a, it was a twenty four seven basically. They basically basically all, I, yeah. I would say was, was someone on from like ten to two, and then someone was on from two to six. And well, on the website, it was like a little it was it was a little different, right? right. So they just kind of like would 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 make their videos, post them, and then as they got bigger, they started doing their own shows. Yes. And at that point, more people came in, and they had different slots for different shows. And essentially, at now at this point, yeah. they have Barstool Radio. They have several different podcasts. They are on all day. All day. And who, do you guys consume it? You know what's funny? We are, I'd say, the few that don't consume it like the average mm-hmm. person, especially people our age are obsessed with Barstools. I don't know, man. I just think a lot of their content is like... Um, like dumbing down society in a way, especially like the younger generate. Like you know, it's I like content that's gonna motivate me. You know, make me inspired, educate me maybe a right. little bit. Like right. I'm not trying to be dumbed down. And a lot of their stuff is is that you know they're they're it's it's I don't know. But a lot of people watch it. A lot of people love their stuff. They do have like you know good content. It's not like it's bad content in in terms of the way they do it, but. The, the meat, the, the the juice about it is just, it's not my cup of tea, I should say. I think I, they got a little, they strayed a little too far from what they were From what they originated. You know? with, yeah. like, for, like their Instagram Listen, page, yeah. for example, was always, always <coughs> sports stuff, right? But then they started posting like funny things, like, oh, look at this guy who's drunk on a bike who falls down. Yeah. Like, I, I followed this to, to watch some sports stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see, like, these memes or right. these TikTokers on oh, here God. talking about whatever. Like, they got a little, I guess, um, Dave Portnoy's kind of, like, losing lost it, I'd it a say. Bit, like, yeah, yeah he's, he thinks he's lost it. I think yeah. he's losing it. He's, he's I don't know, how old is he? Almost 50 now? I think he's, like, 47, maybe. Yeah, so he's almost 50, but he's he's got a podcast with these TikTokers who are 18. And he's, he's like, trying, pop culture stuff. Like, like it's like, just, dude. He's just, just like trying to stay relevant. I yeah, think, at this point. to the it's younger like, generation. It's like, all on, right, dude, just stick to the sports. Yeah, stick to the stick sports. To what, you're cool your guy, enough, Yeah, like, your, your bread and butter was what you guys been doing, yes. and now you're starting to stray on all these different things. And right. it's just, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah, and it's I don't know. It's just weird. It's just weird. It's crazy, the times we live in. Mm-hmm. Honestly, but I think I you're right, Mike, in terms of of Barstool kind of pushing that narrative of of you know breaking away from a normal like. ESPN, like, this is just what happened, yeah. and more towards, like, editorial stuff. Yeah. yeah. I know. It's crazy. Barstool has definitely changed the game. I, honestly, I remember when Paps, for example, when we, I went to my class with him, my first class, he said, because I had long hair hair when I, when I was about to go to school, I cut it all off, you know, very clean, you know, like the traditional, like, hey, I, you know, I want to look professional. And Barstool's literally changed all that. Now, now there's mm-hmm. people with beards and this and that, full tattoos everywhere. I don't have one, but full tattoos and stuff, you know, it's just the world's different now. The world's a little bit different, and uh, I don't know. It's interesting, honestly. I'm glad that we have the opportunity to do this because, mm-hmm. you know, we're creative guys, and that was one th- reason why, actually, I, I went all in with this is because it just felt like I wouldn't have been able to get the chance of to create, produce, or whatever. Well, you're young enough where you can take a shot, right? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want a family or whatever. And, no, no, you know, no, no. I don't have one. I don't want one for a little. But I, my point is, is you know, once your responsibilities change, your you, your approach may have to change. But yeah, hey, man, give it a shot. Why yeah. not? I know. Why not? I know. know. That's what I. That's what we thought. And honestly, it's it's been awesome. Yeah. It's been a great ride right now, and I'm just enjoying every moment. Like, look, we have Bill Pito in the studio right now. Like, are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, I dope is that? It's well, awesome. I didn't tell you what my fee is though. <laughs> oh, we'll take you to dinner. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so how'd you get? So what made you leave ESPN though? Uh, they kind of told me to leave. Oh, same mm. with Tony then with MLB. Yeah, they, <laughs> they uh, didn't tell me to except leave. they didn't tell him. He just well, he just went in the office yeah. and he wasn't supposed I, to be I, there. I, I just wasn't on the schedule one day. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was it. That's it. They didn't email. So I them. basically opened up my my schedule. Uh, I'll never forget. It's February of '01. And it said ESPN News, ESPN News. Wow, ESPN that's right News, after 9-11. Yeah. Before. But the point is, is that there's so many people there and there were during my time that, yeah. you know, they would make a, it's a very subjective evaluation about who they like and who they didn't. And obviously somehow I had fallen right. out of favor 
it's not necessarily communicated to you until you open up the schedule, the equivalent of a baseball player looking at the lineup card and saying, hey, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went down to ESPN News, and I say go down because at that point it was kind of like AAA, and I, I basically did that for six years uh, before they ultimately said, you know, it's time to, time to go. Yeah, and then how did that MSG job open up? Thankfully, <laughs> uh, thankfully, <laughs> The GM of the t- at the time, Dan Ronane at MSG, was a big hockey guy. He was from Detroit. And remember my work at, on ESPN2 on NHL Tonight. So it's not always easy to find a wow. hockey host. And that's kind of a – there are not a, lot, not a lot of hockey hosts. So thankfully I had that background, and they needed someone on the Rangers and the Knicks. But a lot easier to find someone to do Knicks and Rangers. And, and thankfully I was uh, able to fit that mold for them. And it's been great. I've been there since 2009. So wow. It's been fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. That's honestly, I feel like you have a dream job out of like all the, I, and it's funny because I, I, I'm like one of those dudes that I wouldn't want to be a, like a Dan Patrick or whatever. I wouldn't want to be one of those guys because it's like, I feel like the normality of your life, of the regular life, you know, gets gets away. What, because you're so big, you mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I don't know, like... I, I, for example, I saw Dan Patrick during COVID walking on the boardwalk in Milford with his wife and, and like had a hoodie up and stuff. And like, of course, there's people like trying to talk to him. It's Were there like, people talking to it's him? It's like trying to, but it's like, dude, it's COVID. First right. of all, it was during like, you know, where you can only walk outside type of a time. It's right, like, right. it's just like, even during that moment, it's like, you know, it just seems like too much, but like, you, you know, you, you're, you're, you're in the Northeast, like, you know, Maybe some people out west or somewhere like will will catch a Knicks game if they're you know on MSG optimum you know seventy one whatever it is right seventy one seventy one yeah. and um, you know and then you do you know you do the pre the 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 mid you do the the halftime show right the MSG one fifty okay the, cool the highlight segment which and then has the been post fun, bang yeah. bang yeah. bang yeah. at night get to watch the Knicks game right. or rain. are you kidding me no it's great like that's uh, just it's been great. And you and obviously, I like I I, sh- I told you I watch it when I watch the games and like you Han and Wally all look like you love each other, like yeah. you guys genuinely enjoy. Oh, well, we got you fooled. <laughs> oh yeah, no. <laughs> no, it's fun. No, we have a lot of fun. Yeah, we, you, try not to take it too. I don't take what I do too seriously. I don't take the guys too seriously, and I don't take myself too seriously. Yeah, that's just. Uh, thankfully, we've been a, uh, given a little leeway now to have a little more fun with things. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's been uh, – and it also helps when they win 41 games when they're supposed to win 22 games. Oh, my God. I mean, who God. had the over? I didn't have the over. No, Anybody I, have the over? I, I mean, don't know. I wish I did. It would so, have been a lot of money. It's one of the great surprise. – you're a Knicks guy. I, one of the most surprising Die teams. Die hard. If not the most surprising team, you could Ever. throw this up there with any, any no, surprise yeah. in the history this, of the franchise. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's the best way to put it. No one ever thought they'd be there. And they were, they're ahead of schedule. And I'm honestly excited to see what they do. Off season wise, you know what I mean. I think I know, ooh, Julius Randall. Are you kidding me? Seventh year, breaking records, doing things that only you know the greatest of all time type of players have done. Putting up stats of twenty five plus. The da da da. It's ridiculous. And I know he had a bad playoffs, but I don't care. That was it's his first time. It's a, a young squad. Need an elite point guard. Need it to start. Need a starter. You like Dinwiddie? How about Dinwiddie? We talk about Dinwiddie a lot. <sighs> Might be cheaper than like Alonzo but Ball. Isn't he or, a two? Doesn't he? I, do, I think he's, he's a just big, a one, six, seven point guard. Yeah, that's. I mean, then I would take him. Honestly, coming off injury, two. You know, he's gonna yeah. be fresh, yeah. be rested. Need somebody. I know. I was somebody thinking somebody can shoot. I know. That Alfred Payton deal at the end. Oh my rough. gosh. See, I horrible. wonder when you go, if the coach goes back over it if he if he regrets changing the rotation because that second unit without Rose. I know it's, it suffered. hurt him. Hurt him a lot. And I, I wonder if he felt like, yeah, we could have maybe, in, a, in hindsight, survived the six minutes of Peyton starting yeah. and had our second team intact. He just lost but, all confidence, yeah. Peyton. He wasn't that bad midseason. He started having just games here and finish. there. He can't, sh- just can't shoot. He's the same player he was when he got drafted to Orlando, honestly. Yeah. Exact yeah. same player, except right. he has no hair now. Good D, though. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And, you know, I don't care. Nilakina, like He's gonzo. Oh, done. Yeah. That was... Uh, I was so bad when they tra- – oh, my God. I was like, great, here we go. No, but honestly, this is – I'm so surprised that the Knicks uh, are where they are, and it's all credit to Thibs. You know, New Britain guy, first coaching, real coaching job with that Knicks team, back with Van Gundy. And 
I think it's the perfect way for him to end his career as a coach with the Knicks, I'd say, right? I he's mean, fantastic. He's the, yeah, he's the best. You know, it, you look at, like, Stan Van Gundy, and Van Gundy blows up after one year in New Orleans. And, I look, uh, look I don't know it that intimately because I'm not right. on the team that much, but it seems like they both have similar personalities. Yeah. However, they don't have similar personalities because the players buy into Tibbs and they do not get along with Van Gundy. No. So Van Gundy, after one year, is out, Damn. and Tibbs is a coach of the year. I think it's like – like we have a – I pointed that ball because it's signed by Taj Gibson. Like, I, I think it's dudes like Taj and, and D. Rose and a lot of those vets, like, who have, have been around Taj to let those young dudes know, like, listen to him. Trust me. He's going to get you where you need to go, right. you know? I, I love that team. I really do. I'm excited for them. Um, but, yeah, so what happens when the next season's over – what 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 does Bill Pito do in the off season? Podcast with Mike and Tony. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Here. A lot of free time. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, do you golf for anything? I no. I not. I, my back's kind of up and down. Yeah. I uh, I have a lot of free time, and to be honest, sometimes it's a challenge to stay busy. Yeah. Uh, but it's so intense during the season. Yeah. Because with the Rangers and the Knicks, I'm almost in there. Uh, you know, six seven days a week, five yeah. six days a week. But I love that. So, um, yeah, I have a lot of free time. Draft's coming up. We're going to have a draft show on July 29th. Oh, cool. To that. cool. Got free agency early August. Yep. I can't Before wait for that. You know it's fall. The here. season's back, yeah. yeah. We should have you also call into our uh, our sports show sometime. Okay. If you want, just to, you know. You guys are on. Were you on today? Yeah, we're going to be on after this, actually. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. You can call us on your drive back. You, yeah. two, guys, you two guys? Barnes is coming in. That yeah. guy we told okay. you who's uh, who okay. should be uh, like on, air on, somewhere. on air. He should yeah. be on 90. Get Carl and off. 98.7. <laughs> hire Barnes. Like, <laughs> honestly. Carlin's done, but that's... Oh, and you worked for Mad Dog. I did. I saw that. I did. Uh, so after, uh, between Bang. ESPN and MSG, uh, about a year there, I'd never... I'm not... I don't love the talk radio. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. If you're a TV host, brevity is what you need to be. Yeah. Or brief is what you need to be. Uh, when you're on talk radio, you need to, like... Extend and that's just not it. my... Right. Yeah. Not my, so I got in there... With Bruce Murray, who was an old friend of mine, and we did, we called ourselves the B team. We were on from 10 to 2. I like that. Uh, and it was a great experience. But the biggest challenge I've ever had is having to do a radio show alone. Mm. Like the, sometimes he would be off. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. These guys that can host a radio show yeah. by themselves. Dave Rothenberg's great at is it. Is he by himself? But he's on with guys. He's so. with Chris Candy right. and Rick, but on Saturdays he does it by himself well, for like three hours. Impossible. He kills it. He kills it's very, it. very, very challenging. Yeah. It's very challenging to keep it going. The guess isn't there. you got to fill. Yeah. To have interesting Takes, opinions yep. like I think Colin Cowher is a master. Yeah, mm -hmm. he does do a good job. But anyway, being a TV guy and doing that was like, oh my goodness, this is totally different. What you'll notice is sometimes radio guys try to be TV hosts and they can't do mm -hmm. it because they talk too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like as a TV host in a half hour show, I have to tee you up succinctly and say something quickly. Yeah. It's a totally different skill set. Yeah. And as a host, you're not used to maybe having a lot of these opinions. Right. So while it was a great experience, I, I don't think I was great at it. And then the MSG wanted me, and then I was unable to do both. Yeah. So, thankfully, it worked out. It was yeah. a great experience. Mad Dog's incredible. Yeah. He's the greatest in the world. Yeah. He's the greatest guy in the world. It was a great experience, but probably not the best fit for me. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because Thorne, our professor Thorne, he, mm -hmm. uh, he, he's a big-time, one Emmys uh, camera operator. Right. You know you know him. Right. And uh, he said the big reason why he – like, it kind of reminds me of what you just said, like – in studio, as opposed to him being out um, as a camera person, uh, live, live, like in studio, as opposed to live, he, like it's just the adrenaline rush for him. And to I feel be like, out live, right? Yeah, like, and I he, feel is like, he out live or in the studio? He's not. No, he's studio. never in the studio. Right? Like he does not. He yeah, does not. Because if you're a cameraman, you, the studio's boring. You're just like right. I know. Right. Like, literally, you could you could fall asleep. Right. Like literally, it's like right. on those. I've done it. I'm not falling asleep, but I've done camera operating for in studio. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, right. Not falling asleep, but. Right. Uh, no, it seems like that's the same thing. It's more of an adrenaline rush for you with the MSG. It's more of like a boom, 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 boom. Right. Where over there, it's like, all right, uh, Brian from yeah, Long but Island. You can't, the problem <laughs> is you can't do it like that. Yeah. You, you're hosting a, a four-hour radio show. Yeah. you got to be on and up. It's, yeah. I have tremendous respect for those people. I know. I know. It's uh, ridiculous. And some And, like, to me, Colin Cowherd's takes are really interesting. Yeah. I think it's really hard uh, if you're doing a show by yourself to have a take that is – Interesting. Yeah. 
I know that makes it actually you think. know Howard brings you know all kinds of things into <laughs> his discussion, which I think is great. And, yeah, um, but he's to me he's like very unique. I love his setup too, like his studio setup. Yeah, and the, way, the Fox one. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Where he's like his his areas yeah. over here, they got yeah. the guest area here, right. and then the. But co-host. you know that's more to the point about what we were talking about before. Like I don't think he he leaves ESPN, so he leaves that big platform. Yeah. I don't think he gets a ton of viewers on whatever he is FS1, and mm-hmm. I don't think people can find his radio show. Yeah, I don't even know like, where. How it is. do we find it? I I cause you're you see Connecticut. Clips. Yeah, I just find clips on YouTube or whatever. Right. Honestly, and that's that, another point. If you have a clip on YouTube. Like, we have our, our post-game clips on YouTube yeah. now, and we get a ton of hits yeah. on the MSG yes. Network's YouTube channel. Yes. Which is a whole other way of delivering audience uh, content it, it's to cause, people. It's because people have such a sh- short attention spans right. now. They they just literally are like, all right, I don't want to sit through anything. When do you talk about this part of what you're talking about? Like, in Nick's coverage, for example. When are you going to talk about the, the second half of the game? All right, it's right here. Here's the right. real like final right. coverage of whatever. Right. It's like, okay, now I know. 30 seconds, bang. Right. I don't know. I'm more old school. Me, I feel like Tony is too, where I'll sit there. I could watch and sit there and enjoy everything. Mm-hmm. We actually will sit there and watch stuff and be like, horrible cut by the director, you know, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, like, funny. With, well, mo- well, you find that a lot of fans your age won't even sit and watch a game anymore? No. Absolutely. No. They, they don't. It's they crazy. Don't. No. So, But yet they know as much about the team as the guy watching the game. They just get their highlights on They're some on social media. They don't Twitter. really yeah. watch, though. That's the thing. They don't watch, like, these guys over here, like, for example, I'm not the biggest baseball fan. These guys are. Tony, yeah. Barnes, yeah. they'll, Matt, they'll watch the inning one to the mm-hmm. extra innings. Yeah. They'll actually watch the game. I these other it. guys, they just look at the stats, blah, blah, blah. Right. They know, their, they know what baseball is. You don't even think they're watching an NBA game? <sighs> So I'll give you an example. I watched about four minutes last night, of game one of the NBA Finals, the mm-hmm. last four minutes. Yeah. And I could probably give you uh, a, an overall pretty good summation of what of happened. Of everything that happened, right. right. No, they definitely do not do that. No, but my point is I don't need to watch the whole thing to know. Oh, the whole, right. the rest so, of the yeah, three quarters. I watched the yeah. last four minutes. Yeah, I that's watched, it. You know, Chris Paul, I watched. <laughs> yeah. You see, he has 30 points. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like clearly. You see the, see the box score after. And, <laughs> yeah. You know. I know, I know. That's you know, that's just the world we live in. I feel like everybody wants everything quicker, as fast right. as you can, right. right now. So I mean, yeah. Tony's like, eh, I, can't I like sitting down and watching a game start to finish. You know, especially, no, I know. Even even basketball too. You sit down, and you just I enjoy put it. your phone away. You just watch yeah. it. You don't think yeah, about it. I'm, I'm not know? a baseball guy though. Yeah, me either. But and I will oh. watch the NFL. Unlike most people, like I don't automatically go right to the red zone. Right. No. No. Yeah. I'll Sometimes that's too much for me. It's like too much. Like all the, on, screens. all the screens, all the screens, yeah, the yeah, quad yeah, yeah. box. Right. I'm like, I don't. Know, that's I don't how a lot of people box. now have to have to watch. Barnes watches it like that. I know. Our buddy Barnes. Are like, you guys? What do you? Who, what NFL team do you like? Sadly, the Jets. Yeah, yeah. It's just pathetic. But <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad. Well, you're hopeful. I am hopeful this season. I I do love Salah, and I think uh, Wilson's going to be good. I think we have a good young team. But it's just you know, it's, you, it's like it's like honestly, I feel like the beginning of the season last year with the Knicks, mm-hmm. with the Jets this season, it's like I think they're gonna have closer games, but I'm not hopeful in many wins. And then if they do end up going ten and six or whatever, I'll be happy. What happened? You were preaching. What do you? What do you say? Best show on turf. Well, yeah, that that Come too, on. that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, um, I don't know. What else? What else do you want to talk about? Anything? Just uh, hope it keeps going. I mean, you know, one of the things about what we do is it's really helpful when they're the Knicks are good. Yeah. Uh, and if we can now have a team that's going to continue to be relevant. I think some Knicks fans took a while to buy in. Yeah. But you could see down the stretch, and and when the COVID restrictions were lifted, the, the juice at MSG. How was that? So game two, yeah. game two, they beat the Hawks at home. Basically, 7th Avenue had to be shut down. It's like the Knicks won the championship. Wow. <laughs> oh so... Uh, hopefully that's that's what we're looking at. Yeah. I just hope it's not a case where teams are going to start taking them more seriously. I think the Knicks really benefited from the fact that they yeah. couldn't do a lot but practice. Mm-hmm. If you look at the three point shooting, it's clear that they had nothing to do but practice because yeah. the three point shooting improved incredibly during yes. the season. They were horrible. To they start finished the fourth overall when yep. all was said and done. So, look, they got the nineteenth pick, the twenty first pick, yep. and the thirty second pick. If they don't make a move, maybe they can make uh, a trade to move yeah. up. Hey, they got cap space. And Mitch was hurt. Right. 
That's he's one of my point. favorite players in the league, honestly, Mitchell Robinson. I wonder if Mitch is against Capella against the Hawks if it would have made a difference. Yes. I, I think that's a different series. I think we come out of that, honestly. I just think, plus Nerlens got hurt. Right. He got hurt even though he was, I loved what he did this year. And it just would have been different. We would have Nerlens as our backup to, you know, have, be Mitch coming at him, start the game, then Nerlens, then Mitch back at him. Capello, I don't know, he looked soft in the uh, the next round. Let's just put it that way. He looked like a totally different player. If we had an, our actual center who is a, a stud athlete it's ridiculous and talk about a motor mitch robinson's got a motor he, he missed half the season i know it sucks he broke his hand or whatever yeah, it was foot, and then yeah. his foot right, right after i think they might have rushed him maybe after the hand because you know it takes time to get your feet back underneath you you know so he's got a, another year at 1.6 million great value great value you no know, they had burks at uh six million noel at five million bullock at four million think about this that year the value. they had such wow. a low cap number and they got so much value out of these guys are they were they on one years yeah oh so all of them and d rose is up uh you think they bring d rose back yeah i hope yeah, so me yeah me too yeah he's such a so but the cap you know they have a lot of cap space randall what's interesting about randall is that he has a team option yes. at 20 million he can make more money if he holds out next year yeah. as opposed to signing extension this summer. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully he signs it now if he really wants to help the team. You know what I right, mean? Right, less money. Yeah, you know, hopefully he does that. But he's rolling the dice if he turns it down. Heaven forbid something happens, right? So. I know. What do you think about Kawhi? You think he's going to leave? He's staying no. in LA? Do people really think he's going to leave? Yeah. People think he's going to leave? Yeah. I don't know. I, I I'd like to know if he needs knee surgery. I, it's been I'm un, sure. unknown what the story is. Yeah, they haven't they haven't confirmed. You know, uh, Giannis comes back from what looked like a complete knee implosion. Yeah, not not one iota of damage. Yeah, it's unbelievable. His knee went inverted. I know. When Sometimes a hyperextension is better than like a tweak. Yeah, you know? like Kawhi had a tweak, and he's. I don't know if he needs. I would think we would know. We would have known by now if he needs ACL surgery. Yeah, I, or I they know. just don't want anyone yeah. to know because yeah. they're weird. Kawhi's. He, oh, sorry, he's been weird with ever since he left San Antonio. We always talk about his uncle. Right, his uncle he's got a, to. But he's a New York guy. You yeah, know, right. you know. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Uh, maybe he does come. But I don't want. I don't want anything like we did with Melo. I don't want to give up our young assets. I don't want to give up money, and then we have a team for six years. That's. Oh, maybe we get to right. the second round. Right. Uh -oh. See, the Nets to me are top heavy. Yeah. If you do if you go all in on a couple three stars and you have no bench, Milwaukee and Phoenix each have benches. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah. I know. Atlanta I, had a lot of depth. I know. Young depth yes. too. They are I think young. that's something to watch because right. the Nets really got hurt when these guys were unable to go. Yeah. They didn't have enough bench Juice, support. Yeah, they right. just it was over. Kai I didn't expect Kyrie to go down or Harden, honestly. I thought I really did think Brooklyn was just going to run away with the East. Hey, if Durant had smaller shoes, it would have been a three in game oh, seven. Oh, I know, I know. It would have been. It would have been over. But, yeah, no, I'm excited for next season. Um, and, you know, I think this is a good place to leave off, right? Do you have anything you want to ask, Bill? Uh, did we ask him what's next? Oh, yeah, what's going on? What's next for Bill, Pito? Yeah, how, how, how old are you now, Bill, if you don't mind sharing that? That is a covert You're, question. Yeah, oh, see, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. How old do I look? 35. Honestly, how old do I yeah. look? Um, honestly, I could pass for what? I would say early 40s. There you go. I'm 56. Yeah. I was going to say like 44, 45. Yeah. 56. Good yeah. for you. That's, That's awesome. Amazing. What are you? Nationality. <laughs> uh, whatever you want me to be. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of Eastern European. Blood. Okay. Cool. Oh, cool. I'm, but my family is Bulgarian, actually. So Eastern European right there. Yeah. Uh, I'm mostly so Italian. Hey, I love my job. I, I, I'll go as long as I can go. I yeah. love why, why I mean, love it. Yeah. Love it. That's awesome. Hopefully that it. I'm on a, a Knicks wave here for the next five to ten years. That Me too. Yeah. I hope so too. I think yeah. you will be. Good. I think I think I think this is gonna be the start of something very beautiful with the Knicks. I really do. Yeah. I really do. It's just like all the things are lining up. I think Dolan's finally took taking a step back, like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be as involved. And I it, I honestly is showing, you know? I think they've done a great job. I think yeah. Leon Rose you know, he's a little bit under the radar in terms of uh, yeah. being a public figure. It doesn't matter. Uh, he made a great hire in Coach Tibbs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, look, it's a big off season, and hopefully it's a great year next year. Yeah. And hopefully next year we are coming to check out the games and coming to check you out at, right, the, uh, 
at the studio. So again, sorry about forgetting about uh, our first uh, oh, appointment, no but no. hopefully we made it up to you this time around. No, yeah, you did. I'm glad you came. I appreciate you. And uh, we're definitely going to have to have a part two. Yeah, for Anytime. sure. All right. Anytime. Yeah. Peace, guys. All right, boys. Bye, everybody. Hey, guys. Tony here from Downtime TV checking in. I want to thank all our fans out there who's been liking, subscribing, sharing our content. You guys are the best. You guys are our bloodline. You make us love what we do. Thanks again.